Yeah, I guess it's okay. Am I big while I'm doing it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Feel free to do it. Okay. All right. So we're here with Victoria. How are you doing, Victoria? Good. How are you? Pretty well. Um, where are you from? Oh, that's hard. Um, I was born in Ohio. I grew up in Baltimore and West Virginia, but I've been all across the country. Lived all across the country. Tell me a little a little bit about your parents. Oh, um, my my mom I really don't have um, contact with. I didn't, I haven't really ever had much contact with her. She left when I was little. Um, I ran, I've seen her for a couple years when I was a teenager, but she never really wanted to be a mom, so. Um, uh, my dad is a recovering addict. Um, he's got like 25 years clean, or 30 years, something like that clean. Um, he actually has my three oldest kids. He has what? My three oldest kids. Okay. Well, I'm sure you're like really appreciative of that. Yeah, yeah. Instead of them being in like foster care, right? Yeah, we we bumped heads on it. You know what I mean? Well, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, all in all, I, I appreciate the fact that they are taken care of. You know? Yeah. Of course, That's, I'd rather them be with me, but. Sure. Is that the end goal? Um, yeah. Well, my oldest two are 18 now, so it's up to them now. Sure. You know when my dad tells them, you know, if they can. Are you gonna leave Texas? Um, I don't know. Um, my plans aren't, you know, they, you know, I, I just spoke to my dad recently about maybe my kids coming up here like for the summer or something, because I'm getting ready to get an apartment, which is gonna have uh, two or three bedrooms so that they have a room for themselves. So I guess I'm just waiting for him to have that discussion with my kids. Okay, um, that's awesome. So, brought you to Austin, Texas in the first place? How did you get down here? My stepdaughter, well, <laughs> that uh, allegedly my ex and I um, stole a U-Haul in, in West Virginia and did things and got, you know, my stepdaughter called us and said she needed help. Somebody broke into her house and so we came up here. And? Eight hours later we ended up in jail and was in prison for two years. Did you go to prison? Mm -hmm. What'd you guys give um, Well, he, he had some drugs. I, I took responsibility for um, a needle that was in his pocket. I didn't know that there was more in the truck because he was a previous, you know, um, drug uh, offender or whatever, you know sure. what I mean? So I figured I would get less time than him, but we ended up both going. Oh, wow. so tell me, how old were you when you started, like, deciding that you liked to get high and what substance was it? Did you start off with weed or like? Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, I started smoking weed when I was like nine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, uh, with with neighbors. We'd buy my dad's stuff, you know, drinking. Yeah. I mean, me and my brother used to steal his shots and his old beers when we were real little. So, I mean, it's kind of always, I guess, watching our parents do it, you know, it's like sure. normal to us. But, um, but I, I, started, I started doing meth when I was, not, I'm probably about 17. I started doing coke when I was really young, 15, 16, um, for some years. Um, but I mean, I've done, I've done everything. You know, um, I have been off of the the needle for like two and a half, about two and a half years, I'd say, maybe about two years. Um, but well, no, maybe not that long. You know, about a year and a half, I'd say. Um, which was like a big step for me because you know, it was oh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. It gets nasty with those abscesses and then yeah, not, I, you know, <clears throat> trying to find a vein. Yeah. Do you attribute you being off the needle to smoking fentanyl? I do. I do. It um it it definitely um I'm not okay. At first, when I started doing fentanyl, you know, I was shooting it, but just because my brother had recently passed away at this point and. Uh, not that I wanted to kill myself, like I wanted to get to him. I wanted to make sure he was okay. You know, it was like. <laughs> that's like playing Russian roulette, right? I know. Shooting fentanyl. I, mean, I know. That's... Yeah, I mean, but he, besides my kids, you know, my brother was, you know, he's my everything, my best friend, you know, he took care of me growing up, you know what I mean? Like in a, in a lifestyle of, you know, parents drinking and drugging and all that, you know, like he was like my brother, my dad, my best friend, so. How did he pass? 
He had a brain infection. Um, he moved from West Virginia to North Carolina to help rebuild after the houses, and um, they wouldn't give him insurance there. He couldn't afford it, and he ended up in a coma. He ended up what? In a, co in a coma. Oh. Uh, I was in a coma for a couple weeks. My dad and my grandpa went to see him, and um, my dad just... He didn't remember who anybody was, and uh, my dad's like his whole left side was paralyzed or something. And um, right after they left, he went back into a coma, and then three days later, my dad pulled the plug. How, how long ago was that? Three years. Three years. Well, three years and two months. Are, are you uh, uh, adjusting, like, a little bit? I mean, it's... No. <laughs> yeah. No, it's still... It's still it's still up close and personal. <laughs> I don't, yeah, but. Do you feel like that your addiction went from like a, a five all the way to a 10, like as soon as his passing? Yes. I mean, it just went off the charts. Yes. You, yeah. What is your drug of choice? Honestly, weed. <laughs> but uh, with all the other drugs now, it's so, it's so hard to find it, you know. Um, but my uh, the monkey on my back, you know, would be heroin, fentanyl. Yeah. Um, so you use, I mean, you still do ice, right? Meth? Very rarely. Very rarely. Um, I, when I started doing uh, heroin, like it... I really didn't care for the, you know, effects of it. Plus, it kind of sucks here. <laughs> yeah, was, was my next statement was I was going to ask you, do you not do it so much now just because it's just straight trash, or mostly? Yeah. Yeah. Most, and the fact that I, I don't shoot anymore, you know, because when I was doing it, I shot it. And right. Smoking it, it's just not the same thing, you know. So. Um. How long were you on the streets in Austin? Um, my landlord sold his house in 2001, I guess, so two years. Two years. Yeah. What, what camp were you at? Uh, behind Specs. Okay, over off Brody and... Uh, uh, Sunset Valley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would go do outreach over there sometimes. Uh, few times. Oh, uh, how long have you been at Northbridge Homeless Shelter, um, the hotel for the homeless? Since June 10th. June 10th. So, a good little amount, right? Yeah. Are they helping you? Like, yeah. Um, what's got me stuck is uh, trying to get my ID. Like, I, I got my birth certificate, um, and then. My social security card, the social security sent me a letter saying that I've had my 10 lifetime limit, that I have to have some kind of special letter written up as to why I should be, special circumstances, why I should be allowed to have another one. To get an ID. A, a state ID? <laughs> no, no, a social security card. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I don't know everything there is to know about acquiring those, but I've had to do more than several myself because I used to lose them like crazy when yeah. I was on the streets. Um, I, I think, I mean, you, you have to wait at the Social Security office for a while, but as long as you got that money to pay for it. Yeah, but they don't charge you for a Social Security card. It's just, oh, okay. Yeah, but but they won't, they've made a new law that after 10, you're, you have a 10 lifetime limit. It didn't used to be like that. It said something new, newer. So, what's it like here at Northbridge Shelter? I mean, it's nice. You know, they're 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 not they're not everything that was put on the news that that, that was total bull. Right. Um, you know, uh, just some of the things were completely unfounded. You know what I mean? Like prostitution going on in there, and and, and you could walk in the room anytime, and we're shooting up, we're shooting our neighbors. We're not even allowed in each other's rooms. Like right. if we go in there, we literally sneak in there. You got to be like really careful, because if not, you get caught, you get in trouble. You yeah. know. Um, but they got a lot stricter after that, you know, because they had people, sure. you know, thinking that, that everything in here was bad. I mean, I'm not going to say that, you know, nobody in here uses drugs, you know what I mean? But we don't do it here, you know, like, go somewhere and do it, you know? I mean, it, they, they search us at the gate coming in. That is kind of annoying, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, I get it, but, like, uh... I understand, you know, the weapons and stuff like that, but to literally have to know absolutely everything that we have in our pockets, you know, I wasn't even allowed to have a freaking pair of scissors. 
Yeah. A pair of scissors. Well, I'm not a kindergartner. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, that's a, and then curfew. We have curfews, and that's that. That's really aggravating because you got somebody at the gate anyways. There's always a security guard at the gate. So why should it matter if you know what I mean? Like. What's your curfew? Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock. I know teenagers that have a later curfew than that. <laughs> yeah. And, and we can't leave before seven. Now me, I, I'm in bed before. <laughs> well, before eleven usually, but I guess you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm old. I'm 39. <laughs> but uh, they're kind of, I don't know, I guess I guess you kind of like really got to bug them to get a caseworker. There's a lot of people in here that don't even have right. caseworkers yet, you know. That's the thing that I was concerned about. Yeah. Getting a caseworker and then getting the apartment, but you're saying that things are looking up for you as far as the apartment. You just yeah. need your ID. Yeah, yeah, because I stayed on them about it, you know, so. I'll, um... Just so you know, you can call me and uh, like I, I know apartments that will take felons and all oh, yeah. that stuff. So. On the north side, south side? North, south, all, all over the place. Cool. Yeah. Um, Somebody give me a ride up to the courthouse, it'd be even better. <laughs> which courthouse? The municipal. Downtown? Mm-hmm. Okay. I had to be there at 9 o'clock in the morning, and the buses, I'll either get there an hour early or like 30 minutes late. For what? Um, well, I can get that paper for the social security, oh, okay, and, okay. and I have a, I have an old um, uh, paraphernalia warrant that they're going to take care of, give me community service for it, so I don't have that on, on my head. <laughs> so you've been here for six months or seven months? Yeah. How many ODs have you seen since you've been here? Oh, wow. Well, I don't know. I, I probably couldn't even count how many people I've narcan Um I, I keep Narcan on me. Um, we had a friend that came from the woods with us. Um, she had gotten kicked out of here. Right, well, not really kicked out of here. They put her in a, in a, um, a home, or I mean, like one of the, for uh, mentally people. And yeah. um, she got out and she ended, up, she ended up going to jail. She came down here the day she got out of jail. She OD'd right outside. Uh, we Narcan her. She was fine. About a week later, she came back and uh, she ended up dying right there on the corner. Um, rest yeah. in peace, Celeste. Um, yeah. yeah um, yeah, there. I mean, it's 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 a lot. It's it, if you um, had to take a guess, how, how many people have have you have I seen physically or heard about also just narcanning or dying? At least twenty. Twenty in six months. At least at least twenty. I, I've had several close friends die. Been that not even just here, but you know, a couple of my friends have died in the old apartment that I moved from. And. Do you? Uh, how many people are here in Northridge? Like, I think how they. Many just, I think seventy. Seventy. So. Uh, wow. Yeah. And I, uh, the better half, at least half of them, does. You know. At, at least half of them. Do are, it, you know. Or on fentanyl. Yeah, I mean. Or ice. Not not everybody in here does drugs. I'm take that. Not everybody, but you know, for the most part. Most of them do. I mean, I would think, just because I'm from Austin and I've known a bunch, I've known people who have died here. I know people, I've known a lot of people who have been here, and everyone that I knew was on it for sure. But so I would have guessed like 92% would be on something. But. Yeah, we actually had another resident that um, passed away right here on the corner uh, about a week ago, and we're not exactly sure where that's, you know, what, what caused that. Um, you know, there's always rumors, but he didn't do fentanyl, but there's been a, maybe he may have been given a, a bowl of ice that was laced or something, oh, and we're not really sure, but... If you had to take a guess, would you think it has something? I would, I mean, he seemed healthy to me. I talk to him every day, you know, he's a good friend of mine. Um, and, but I, and I know for a fact that he did not, he did not mess with it at all. Like he was completely dead set against it. His girlfriend passed away uh, about eight months ago on an overdose, you know, so. And same thing, she didn't do it either. Somebody had laced, uh, laced something she had gotten Maybe with it. Maybe somebody laced something on him, right? Um, I think somebody handed him a lot. I, I or personally like a think hot, uh, a hot ball or a hot. Yeah, shot. that's that's what I believe. Yeah. I've seen it happen, and it ain't, it ain't pretty. Yeah. I've seen someone survive a hot shot, and they were fucked. For the yeah, oh, I've seen that too. <laughs> like they couldn't walk for eight months, and like 
he couldn't even talk for like two weeks. You know, it was crazy. Yeah, this girl I know, um, she was telling me about how she felt bad. She shot her son up when he was like 15 and had to send him to school and he was so scared. And I'm just sitting there thinking in my head, like, I would kill somebody if they gave my 15 year old a shot of dope, any kind of dope, you know what I mean? Like, shoot your own kid, are you crazy? <laughs> Uh, things like that, I don't understand. She shot a, her son, her 15 year old kid up, and sent him to school. Yes. And sent him to school. And then sent him to school. And made him go to school. Wow. Yeah. And then wonder why he's a, a, a homeless shooting heroin now. <laughs> you know. How old is he now? Um, 20, in his late 20s. I've had people, are. At least one that I can remember a person asked me to shoot them up in front of their like four year old while the four year old's in the back seat and I, I didn't feel right about it. It just felt weird. I was I couldn't do it. You know? Do you see a lot of that? Or uh, have you seen a lot of that? Doing it not necessarily in front of um, in front of children, no. Um, I'm smoking weed, but a lot of people smoke weed in front right. of children. But. I remember those videos that came out on the news some years ago of like people blowing big ass bong hits in their kit like that's crazy girls faces I mean that that's messed up too you know and and and, I, and then you know there was also the rumor started and I know when I lived in West Virginia some lady had put on Facebook that my husband had just got done giving me a shot of heroin in front of my daughter my daughter was a little baby and she took a picture you close it up he was putting a bracelet on my hand and she put on there that he was shooting me up with heroin in front of my daughter. And it's like, for one, you don't even know me. How would you know what was in it? And for two, look at the picture and put, blow it up. It was a bracelet. You know what I mean? So some things get, you know, blown out of proportion. Absolutely they do. Yeah. Uh, That's why I always say, never believe anything you hear and about 8% of what you see. Because you know, people see what they want to see or what people want you to see. That's the truth, right there, for sure. Um, as far as, like your kids went go when they were younger did your parents st or your dad step in and uh, you know or were you like hey dad can you help me for a little bit I um I actually I split up with my ex-husband and um, he, he did everything he could to get back at me well he kept my two youngest kids from me my my baby at the time and my at the time four-year-old and um, I just got, I got really messed up at a party one night. Um, my, my nieces were watching my kids, you know, um, me and my ex, and um, I ended up uh, ODing. And um, I was in the hospital for three days on a breathing machine. Um, I woke up when doctors said I wasn't gonna come back. Um, while I was in there, my ex-husband called my dad. And, um, cause my dad, my dad and his wife, you know, they'd always, his wife can't have kids. So, you know, they always wanted them. So he called my dad, and my dad came and got him, and then from then that was it. That was done. They weren't. They wouldn't. It was, that was. It was over. Well, that's a lot better than like child protective services coming in and swooping, right? Yeah, I mean, yes, I, 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 I totally agree with that. But um, as far as myself, like the way I feel about it, like that's my dad. Like you wanted to help me, don't keep my kids from me. So it's been hurting you really, like, like big time. Yeah, take a woman's children and tell her to get clean. Right. Like, and that's the point. I've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's and, not. And I, I did. I did in Arizona. Because my, my daughter, <laughs> I had my daughter out of state. Me and my husband moved. We came back. My ex found out. We were there with her. Called CPS. They showed up. The, the, the original worker from my first case and, um, and, then, and another worker that was in my first case. Well, the one lady goes outside and calls the office because they had come over there. I had already done a hair follicle show that I hadn't used, you know, in, in over nine months, you know. Um, the one lady went outside and told them that we were high right then. So the, the, the main lady said, we'll take them. And so she comes in and she tells Mandy, and Mandy's like, why are we taking her? And she's like, well, you know, she said so. And so Mandy goes out there and I can hear her on the phone with her boss. And she's like, why are you taking her? She's there, you know, she's fine. She, failed, she passed her test. She said, well, the other lady who went out there and told them that we were high right then and there. And, uh, and Mandy come back in and she's like, you know, she yells at the lady, like, why did you do that? You know, and she was like, I'm sorry, but they said, because it's already in the system, we have to take her. And uh, she sat there at our house for like five hours while we tried to find a place to go. We didn't know anybody that didn't at least smoke weed. You know, she actually, she actually fought, you know, for us and was trying, you know what I mean? Like, and then, uh, you know, during that process, I did what, everything I was supposed to. My husband did not. 
And, uh, you know, and I'm calling the lady and I'm like, well, you know, everything's supposed to be separate. You know what I mean? Like, I'm only, he's got his own. Why, why would you not give her back to me? And she was like, well, I would do it with you, but I don't believe that you'll keep her away from your husband. So there was ever my rights to. And I just. Um, as far as the future for, for you goes, as far as your, your addiction goes, do you have have a plan for that? Like, yeah, I mean, are you gonna use always or? Abs absolutely not. A absolutely not. Um, I hate being an addict. You know, um, I it's it's crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I guess now that my children are eighteen and they can make their own choice. Once, and I know my son Jimmy, I know for a fact that he's going to want to see me. You know what I mean? I think as soon as I know that I have that one thing that I've been trying to get for 11 years. Cool. That's good that you have those positive thoughts and that you believe in yourself because if you don't have that, if you don't have hope, you don't have anything. So, and I can just tell by talking to you that, uh, seem like you really had your goals and your positive thinking. It's, I mean, uh, pe I you people always say, you know, you have to do it for yourself before you can do it for others. But with me, like, I'm a mom. I was born to be a mom. You know, and it's like, I don't, I don't care. I can't even look at me and be happy because I haven't had them. You know, like, when I know that I get to be a mom again, I'll be me again and it won't matter. You know what I mean? I'll care about myself then. Do you talk to them often? My oldest three, no, um, not very often. Um, my dad says it's because of my, my kid's therapist or whatever. Like, I don't know. He'll say one thing, but it, I don't really know what to believe because I know the last time they helped my kids call me when my brother died. I think he was afraid I was going to kill myself, you know? And like, the whole time I was talking to my son Jimmy, he's choking back tears, and all he kept saying was how bad he wanted to see me. Well, then all of a sudden they cut me off from talking to him again, and I'm like, why, you know? And um, my dad, had, um, he said something. I was like, well, they need their mom. You can't just keep cutting them off. And he was like, you don't know what they need. Your son tried to kill himself after talking to you. And then he was talking about my son Jimmy, and I'm like, why are you blaming It wasn't because of me. He really tried to kill himself. <laughs> no, or but I think if he did, it's, if he it. did, it's because they're keeping him away from me again. And then, you know what I mean? He, right. Treat Rowdy, he wants his mom. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am confident that you're going to rekindle all that, you know, regardless of how hard it is and what trials and tribulations you go through because I'm, I'm sure you will have some times that aren't easy um <laughs> nothing in my life's ever been easy i'm okay with not easy <laughs> hard isn't normal to me you what's know? your your plan what do you think getting off the hard dope looks like for you like methadone suboxone or just total abstinence I mean, going to rehab. I don't. I mean, that's, I hate to say it. Like, I don't. I don't need rehab. You know what I mean? Like, I like what I just said. That that's that's what I need. You know? It's, I mean, it's, it, that's it. You know? Um, and I like I, now that they're eighteen. Uh, my dad gives me that phone call and says, "Yes, my kids want to come." I said, "I'm done." I mean, and, and, it, and uh, no, I don't, I'm not going to need methadone or, you know what I'm saying? But if it happens to come it, where I've just felt like I've had enough no matter what, I mean, I would probably get on something long enough just to cover the withdrawals. At least a suboxone taper. Yeah, because you know. the withdrawals are horrible. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to get on, on something else too, because, you know, but uh, cause, I mean, but I, I've been on suboxone when I was in rehab and coming out of rehab and stuff. And then when I ran out, they stopped giving it to me and I didn't get sick off of it. So, you know what I mean? Like it just something, I had really bad withdrawals, really, really bad withdrawals. From subs? No, no, or? from, from, from dope. Yeah, I've had them last three weeks before. Normally, like the, for me, the first two, like w when I was doing like three grams a day of like good shit, it, the first two weeks, 
the first 11 days I didn't sleep. Yeah. And then like, but after three weeks, it's it was always completely over. That whole three day kick thing is bullshit. Yeah. Mess, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, see, I, I also had back surgery, so you know, I when, once I kick off the drugs completely, it's going to be really hard on me, you know. But I know I don't want to get back on pain pills because that's ultimately what got me, you know, on heroin. Yeah. I do what you feel like you need to do. I, uh, I I hope you don't feel too like against you know buprenorphine or suboxone just to get you through the worst parts at, at least because I mean everybody needs help and, and and that shit is no joke you know that that fentanyl kick you know yeah <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> um okay one. Last question. In in three, in two to three years, where do you want to see yourself? What do you want your story to look like? Um, I want my kids in my life, um, working and not getting high. I don't, I don't want to continue to get high. It's not fun anymore, <laughs> and it doesn't take the pain away. You know, like. Physically, maybe, you know what I mean? But as far as, like, you know, people usually start because they're trying to get away from other pains, you know? Like, but, it, I mean, it doesn't even numb that anymore. That's just, it's like, it's always going to be there. I hope that, you know, you can always reach out to me as far as anything that you need. Like, you, you can come through the drop in I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a second and uh, you know I can help you with whatever resources you want uh, what do you think in like uh, several months we do like uh, follow up yeah follow up sure How's that sound? sure awesome Victoria thank you and then what's your partner's name oh this is Tilly I call her little girl <laughs> Little girl, yeah, Say hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Above and below, out. <laughs>